Hi, in this video we're looking at mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problems, which are incredibly common uh, in stoichiometry in general. Um, now you can, with stoichiometry, go from moles of one thing to moles of something else, or you can go from mass of one thing to moles of something else, or you can go from moles of one thing to mass of something else, but the most common type of calculation you'll do is going from mass of something to mass of something else. And for that, you really need three conversion factors. Let me show you what I mean. You may remember from unit F that we had this kind of uh, map here, where moles is in the center, and if I want to go from moles to mass, I need to use the molar mass of the substance. To go from moles to particles, I need to use Avogadro's number. In this unit, we're looking at comparing quantities of two different substances. So let's say I brought in another identical copy of this exact kind of map here. The way to get between moles of one thing and moles of something totally different is to use the molar ratio. And we get that by looking at the coefficients from the balanced equation that contains these two substances we're comparing. Now, um, as I just mentioned, going from mass of one thing to mass of something else is the most common type of calculation in stoichiometry. So let me just get rid of particles for a second, although you could certainly go to particles or come from particles in your conversion work. And let me just kind of uh, modify this so that we're just really looking from mass of one thing to mass of something else. You can see that this is going to be a theme that develops. You're going to start with a mass of some substance that's in an equation. And you would find the molar mass of that substance and use that to convert to moles of the substance. Once you're in moles of one substance, you can just simply use the molar ratio from the balanced equation, this is from the equation, uh, to determine the moles of the new substance. And then once you have the moles of the new substance, you use that substance's molar mass to calculate the mass of that substance. Now if you count them, you can see that there are three conversion factors, the molar mass, the molar ratio, and then finally one more molar mass, but for a different substance. And so you're going to see that that pattern develops quite a bit as you do these mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problems. Speaking of doing a mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problem, let's start with this example here. I've given you a balanced equation. This is iron reacting with oxygen to form iron 3 oxide. And it says one mass of iron 3 oxide can be produced when 20 grams of iron reacts. Now we're assuming that that 20 grams of iron is going to react completely. In other words, there's plenty of oxygen there to react all way, all 20 grams. And so here's how we would do this. We're starting at 20.0 grams of iron. And we want to multiply by iron's uh, molar mass. Now, see how you start with grams of iron? That, in every dimensional analysis setup, the unit of the place where you start is always going underneath the fraction so that you can cancel it out. So what's the molar mass of iron? I think I see it's like 50. Let me just double check this one. OK, I got it. It's 55.85. Uh, hopefully you have a periodic table in front of you. Uh, this is the mass of one mole of iron. And so that's how I set up that fraction. Now this allows me to cancel out grams of iron. And now I've moved from mass to moles. So now I'm in moles of iron. I want to then go from iron to iron 3 oxide. And so uh, I looked at the balance equation for this. This fraction here is the molar ratio. And this again allows us to get from substance 1 to substance 2, but you need to use a balanced equation here. And you're only looking at the coefficients at this step. So if you notice, iron is here in the equation. It's got a 4 in front of it. So that means on the bottom, I would put 4 moles of iron. That allows me to cancel out moles of iron. But for every 4 moles of iron, the equation tells me I can produce 2 moles of iron 3 oxide. So on the top, I'm going to put 2 moles of Fe2O3. Now, I do want to call time out for just a second. Notice that I'm including not just the unit, grams or moles. I'm also including the chemical formula of the substance. That's going to be helpful, especially because in these types of problems, we're comparing two different substances' quantities. So I would always recommend, even if it takes you an extra second or two to write the chemical formula of the substance that you're referring to, put it in there. It's going to help you. Okay, time back in. 
my last fraction is going to be the molar mass, and so I'm here. It's going to be the molar mass of this new substance, Fe2O3. So one mole of Fe2O3 has a mass of, let me calculate this real quick. I'm doing 2 times 55.85, and I'm adding to that 3 times 16. That's the mass of each individual oxygen times 3. Um, I get 159.7 grams. That's how much a mole of this stuff weighs. Okay, so now I'm ready. I've canceled out everything I want to cancel out. And look, I'm in mass, grams of iron 3 oxide, and that's exactly what the question is asking me for. What mass of Fe2O3 can be produced? So when I type this into my calculator, I'm typing in 20. I'm skipping over all the ones because they don't affect the math at all. 20 times 2 times 159.7 divided by 55.85 divided by 4. And I get 28.6. 28.6 grams. Now this can be pretty powerful if you think about it. Uh, as a chemist, knowing that if you put in 20 grams of iron and you've got plenty of oxygen, being able to predict how much of this product, maybe you want to make this product, um, knowing how much is going to come out given a certain amount that, of iron that goes in uh, is kind of, it's natural to want to know that. Uh, now let's talk about sig figs because uh, we have to talk about sig figs. Uh, at the beginning, I've got three significant figures in that value, so at the very, very end, I should just match that amount of significant figures. 28.6 has three sig figs just like 20.0 does. Okay, so that's it. Um, that's a pretty emblematic uh, example problem for mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry calculations. Um, I think as you do more of these, you get faster at it. Uh, sometimes molar masses are given to you, and when that happens, I mean, just applause, because molar masses sometimes can be pretty tedious uh, and time-consuming to calculate. So if they give you a molar mass in the problem, just sub that right in. But as I mentioned, you'll see that there's a pattern that develops where you're using the molar mass of substance one, the molar ratio to compare the two substances, and then the molar mass of substance two. And that gets you to the mass of the new substance. After all, you want to know some information about what that new substance is going to do. And mass-to-mass stoichiometry problems will help you figure that out. Thank you.